Hi guys, Paul Pluta on the Paul Pluta channel. Paul Pluta, that's correct. This is the paid watch review channel. Today guys, let's do a paid review. This is AP14 and a quick wristwatch check because I invented the YouTube wristwatch check. I'm wearing a Frank Muller, fuckers. Frank Muller, Frank Muller, Al Ain. That's the greatest football club in the world. Okay, guys, AP14. This is for Chris from Lincolnshire. This is a paid review. This is not a free review. This is a paid review. Hey, Arch, I need your help. I got my 25th birthday coming up, and I want to purchase my first proper watch. That I can say, that can stay with me forever. All I currently own is a Hamilton Field mechanical watch, which I know you think is a shitter. That's correct. It's a fucking shitter. I'm thinking option A, Omega, man on the fucking moon. I love the fact it's manual wine, the history, the look and the price is definitely in budget. However, the lack of water resistance does bother me. Option B. Tudor Black Bay Harrods Edition. I've just put myself on the list for one of these, even though I rang the bastards up in November, but they didn't actually add me. I love the fact it has the green bezel, as my boss has a Kermit, and I, t and I and teased I'd never be able to come and get, I'd never be able to get one at Christmas meal last year, so it has meaning in that regard. And option C, bite the bullet. Go balls out and get the daddy, the daddy of all watches, Rolex. I guess my option here would be an Oyster Perpetual 39mm in something like grape or blue dial. An Explorer one or even a mill ga ga gauss. I'm an electrician. If I'm being honest, I absolutely am in love with the sub, but it would be a stretch. Please save me, Arch. Here's 50 British smackaroonies heading to your PayPal Regards, Chris from Lincolnshire. <coughs> well done, Chris. You have come to the right channel. You've come to the Archie Luxury channel, and I'm proud of you. You've, you've, you've manned up and making the commitment. First watch by 25. I think that is a fantastic start. A man, 25, that's a very, very, you're still a young guy. But you're starting to get some skills. Uh, I think that is a fantastic time to get a superb whist watch. I think that could be amazing. So let's have a look here and we'll, we'll go through your three options. And uh, I'll try and be polite and nice with you. And I'll throw in a fourth option for good measure. Okay, so let's start. Let's start the ball rolling. One, two, three, now. Option A, the man on the fucking moon. The Amiga, the Amiga Speedmaster man on the fucking moon. What can I say? It's a classic. It's iconic. Great bang per buck. Have a look on Joma Shop. It's a grey market dealer in America. They're selling them for about 3600 US dollars. Um... I think the Omega Man on the Moon is great. It does have dust cover, a little bit of resistance, but I wouldn't be swimming with the Omega. I think the water resistance, you've got to remember, any watch that is waterproof, you have to get the seals checked. Just because it's waterproof doesn't mean you can go in water year in, year out. In fact, I very seldomly take a watch in water. I try and avoid it. What water causes a lot of problems. So to um, to answer yourself there, I think the Amiga Speedmaster Man on the Fucking Moon, it is a perfect choice. Uh, fantastic history, fantastic. See, the thing about the Amiga is you could put it on a NATO. You can put it on a leather strap. You can dress it up, dress it down. You can play around with it. Uh, it's it's a very solid workhorse, and I think 
an Omega Speedmaster man on the fucking moon. Don't get any other Omega. You could say, oh, well, if I don't get this Speedmaster, I could get this or that. No, 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 no. It's got to be the manual wind Speedmaster. That is the only one to get. Even a Seamaster, I get the Speedmaster. That is a fantastic watch. Manual wind. It's a chronograph. It's solid. Very, very solid buying. Very solid buying indeed. Solid buying, it's going to hold its value, you're really not going to do badly. So I'd say option A, the Omega Speedmaster Man on the Moon. It's also very versatile with straps or NATOs, so you can fuck around with it. So I, I think that <coughs> option has got a lot of legs. Now let's look at the next option, which is option B, the Tudor Black Bay Harrods Edition. <coughs> I personally don't like it. I don't like it. Harrods is, this is an oxymoron. Harrods is a snooty department store. They were bad to the royal family. The queen no longer endorses them. And i got to be honest with you there, Tudor, I would be buying my Tudor Black Bay on the used market. I bought a brand new Tudor Black Bay last year and I can tell you I lost money. I lost money. So they are falling. I like the Black Bay. I actually had the Burgundy. You can get the the Black, the Blue, and the Burgundy. I think the Burgundy is probably... Uh, it's a unique, because where else do you get Burgundy on a diver? The, uh, the Black is the most desired, followed by the Burgundy, followed by the Blue. But <laughs> they're, they're, it's not a stinker. They're pretty good. There's also, in the blue, there's a Bersha Blue, which is a snooty, snooty retailer in, uh, in Europe. So, um, I don't know if I'd be so caught up. I don't want to go and kiss Harrods asshole to get a fucking limited edition. Um, what I do like, however, is, you know, I think the Black Bay, standard Black Bay, it's a fantastic watch. I'd even... I'd even put in there the Tudor Pepsi. That's right. The Tudor Pepsi. That's right. That's Basel World 2018 release. Uh, if you can get that on a bracelet, that's a fucking hot watch. It's a GMT. Um, I really like that. That's a fantastic piece to go for. So, as for the Harrods, look, the Harrods are selling for a premium in the used market. But I don't want to have to lick their asshole at Harrods in the what section. I mean, you know, it just it's just beneath having to go and lick their asshole, be snooty. And, you know, Harrods, ah, oh, fuck, it's a department store. Big fucking deal. Big fucking deal. It's a department store. Uh, I'd probably just go, what I would do myself if I was going to go for a Black Bay, I'd probably go Burgundy second hand. The other thing is too, as far as investment goes, the ETA version is probably the better investment. Um, Tudors actually drop a bit, the Tudor price, I don't know how it is in, 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 in around your local, with your watch dealers, but Tudors are dropping. In Australia, they're not holding out like Rolex, so... Um, I think the Tudor is a very good option, obviously waterproof. Uh, the thing is, of course, as I said, you're going to have to check the seals if you're going to take it in water. Be very careful, young man. Be very careful with that fact. I, what did I think of the Tudor? I, what I, had, I loved it. I thought it was fucking amazing. Bang per buck, beautiful new clasp on it. It's actually better than the pre-ceramic Submariner Rolex. That's what I felt. And I felt the size. It's a bit big. It's... 41 and a half mils and it's quite tall. It actually would fit a bigger sort of guy. Are you big or are you skinny? I don't, you haven't really mentioned that. Uh, if you are a bit skinny, you could go for the Black Bay 58. The 58, which is the slightly smaller version. Um, you know, it just depends on, for me, I'd go for the standard Black Bay because I'm a fat cunt. I'm a fat cunt. So uh, that's kind of how it goes there. And then that leads us to option C, Rolex, Rolex, Rolex. 
<coughs> I'd possibly, if, if you're an electrician, man, I would fucking stretch to a used Milgauss. You're an electrician. It's anti-gaussing. Gaussing, this is an electrical term. That's so fucking cool. If I was an electrician, get the fucking Milgauss, man. Get the Milgauss. Um, I'm not convinced you won't be able to... I, I, I don't like, personally, I hate licking the arsehole of an AD. They can get fucked. They can get fucked. ADs are not your friends. Uh, I think a used Milgauss, fucking gorgeous watch. That is a top, top notch watch. Uh, I love, my, I've got the Milgauss myself. I've got a black dial with the orange hand. Not the GV, that's the new, the green tinged glass. I've just got this, the, the original clear one. I love my Milgauss. I really do. I really love that. That watch is so cool. Uh, I, it's a three hand Rolex. I think it's, it's a step above just buying an Oyster Perpetual. Nothing wrong with an Oyster Perpetual. Don't, don't get me uh don't take it the wrong way there is nothing wrong with an oyster perpetual um i i honestly um i quite like them they're a fantastic it's a rolex rolex uh but if you can get a pre-owned milgauss i'd prefer that to a new oyster perpetual unless the oyster perpetual had that fucking sexy blue dial that sexy blue dial is fucking gorgeous. So, um, yeah. So, so what would I say your first proper watch, if it was me, ABC, what would I go for? So, A, being the Omega Speedmaster man on the fucking moon. B, being a Tudor Black Bay of some sort. And C, being a Rolex steel. What would I go for? Well, if it was me... I would probably stretch to a Rolex Milgauss. I reckon that's so fucking cool. Uh, I don't care what color dial. You could even go for the white dial. I believe the white Milgauss, uh, the white dial Milgauss is kind of the softest out of the, all of the Milgausses. Nothing wrong with that at all. I personally would go used Milgauss. My second choice would be... Second choice. Fuck, it's hard. The second choice, I'd say, fucking toss a coin. Because whether you get an Amiga Man on the Moon, Speedmaster, or you get a Tudor Black Bay, they're both fucking amazing pieces. Toss a coin. Toss a coin. So if it was me, use Milgauss. That's the way I'd go. If you if if you were buying new, you said, no, Arch, I'm buying new. That's it. I, I don't. You're a newbie. You want to buy new. Um, oh, fuck, this is hard. What would I go for? If I was buying new, what would I go for? I'd probably go Amiga Speedmaster Man on the Moon or Blue Dial Oyster Perpetual. Neck and neck. It's so, those are three fucking good choices. My advice to you uh, Chris is to just take it easy don't rush don't have to build a collection just take it easy every five years at a piece at a piece it's all you need to do every five years at a piece this is going to be fun there's so many wankers on Instagram Facebook and YouTube these massive collections most of them are full of shit uh, just build your collection slowly and I hope I can help you Chris I hope it's helped. So, uh, guys, there you go. This is a first proper watch. He's nailed it. I mean, the fact that he's nailed it like that, you just know it can't go wrong. Any of those choices there is a top choice. I'm Paul Pluto. This was a paid review. Paid reviews is what keeps me here on YouTube full time. Paid reviews. So I got to be completely honest and frank with you. Uh, please, if you haven't done a paid review, could you do one just for me? I'm Paul Pluto. Tell me what you fuckers think of that. Like, subscribe, tell your fuckwit friends. Nasty comments below. And don't forget, guys. Don't forget, guys. Until next time. Ciao, fucker! Hi, guys. Paul Pluto, the method actor who plays Archibald Chesterfield III. Guys, I want to tell you this is so important. Guys, I depend on my Patreon supporters just this week i used my patreon funds 
to get myself a fantastic lightweight gimbal travel camera and I just want to say thank you this was made possible because of my Patreons <coughs> the Patreons they made this purchase possible and it's you know pieces of equipment like this is six hundred dollars plus I need a few memory cards it's such an expensive business guys if you haven't sponsored me on Patreon please do so look in the description for this video here it'll tell you ways you can help me <coughs> guys help me stay full-time on YouTube making videos by helping me on patreon you send a small amount each month to me to keep me enthused and making videos I can buy equipment like this little gimbal camera guys come on help me help me a lot help me help me very much so please cause Guys, I wanna I want your help. I need help to make quality content. And I gotta be honest with you, if I didn't have your help, it's not gonna be much good, guys. It's not going to be much good. I need your help to buy equipment and to uh to do things. So guys, sponsor me on Patreon and I'll be here for you. That's right. I'll be here for you. Please, guys, help me on Patreon. See you later.